Holy cow. Hi, we're back here again. Very awesome. Very pog champ. The first draft of this video was way longer than I expected it to be. And I'm afraid that I'd waste your time here. So I'll just keep it simple and clean. So today I'm talking about the instrumentation in Mega Drive music. I've actually discussed this in a Twitter thread I made last week. The things that I wanted to talk about in this video will be in that thread. Maybe I'll put it like in the description or something because again like i've said the things that i originally wanted to say here were going to make the video way too long so i scrapped it and i'll try to simplify my points just to make it a bit more digestible so what is with mega drive arrangements nowadays and no i'm not talking about the ones that are within the chip tuning community i mean like outside of that when you go to youtube and you search up say a mega drive arrangement of a song you like there's like a 50% chance that it's a sound font remix. Oh, trust me guys, I've done the research when I was doing the world revolving. 5 out of 10 of those videos I've watched were shoddily made sound font arrangements. While I don't think it's necessarily bad as a beginner's tool, it's not really that great for arrangements like this. I feel that people should acknowledge that the sound font isn't really an accurate representation of what the FM synthesizer chip is, especially when it's trying to emulate it. You actually have way more wiggle room when you work with the FM synthesizer instead of say the sound font where you just have those few sounds that it has in its library and that's about it. You can't really expand on them or anything. I feel that we're kind of stuck in sort of a gem situation. A bit of a history lesson, but back in the late 80s to say early 90s, Western composers were kind of struggling with the synthesizer chip because they were really unfamiliar with it. Compared to the Japanese composers at the time who had some basic understanding of FM synthesis. So Sega of America at the time decided to commission Recreational Brainware to create a sound driver to assist them. And that sound driver was GEMS, the Genesis editor for music and sound effects. It then went on to be used in 200 titles. And most of the music they have in these games, well, the instrument for them is pretty similar and gems nowadays is kind of treated as some sort of laughing stock that didn't mean gems was inherently bad most western composers at the time just didn't really know how to work around with FM so they had to resort to using the inbuilt instruments for convenience sake which is why some if not most songs sound very generic and very same-ish but you can't really blame them for not knowing how FM works considering the difficulty of the subject composers at the time were kind of expected to have a basic understanding of FM and they had to learn this stuff at the same time of game development usually spanning around say one year even if some Western composers who use gems managed to break that mold I believe most of them at the time had a pretty valid excuse because they had to work under these time constraints. Whereas in nowadays, I said that we're kind of stuck in the same issue where you'd find your quote unquote Sega Genesis remix to turn out to be some other generic sound font remix, except for the fact that we're not working under these game development time constraints. People are able to learn this stuff at their own pace. Some artists made tutorials and music courses for people to learn this stuff. Talented programmers who are really into chip tuning have made music programs to help us with this stuff. Dedicated people in communities have helped us all rip instruments from older titles just to assist people who are unfamiliar with FM. One of those people being me. I know that because I still use those instruments from those libraries that I picked up online like about a year ago. I still use them till this day. When I kind of understand it, how the four operators work, I made my own instruments. Even if it was a rare occurrence, I kind of used them here and there. One of those arrangements being Oil O 
Persian zone where I used a Shanai, or at least I think it's a Shanai that I made myself. I called it Nokia Funny just to make it simple. But yeah, there are dedicated VSTs and programs out there that are made for this stuff. So why aren't people making the jump to that? I mean, like, everything's right there for you. So why aren't you making the move? Well, to be fair, you can't really blame them for not knowing this. I myself was one of those people. I didn't really jump into chip tuning until I realized that Deathly Mask was way better than I expected it to be. Before I took the shift to Deathly Mask, I was actually using Pixie Tracker. It was a sample based system and most of my music at the time used FM samples that I either ripped from Deathly Mask or from deconstruction videos. Once I got the hang of the layout of Deathly Mask Mobile, I decided to take the shift and I made it to where I am today. Only time will tell when people finally make the change. Maybe some chiptune music through YouTube recommended? Look, I don't know how they'll get into it, but that's how I got it. But it's not even 2013 anymore. The sound font is pretty much very dated at this point and so is the instrumentation that usually goes with these quote-unquote remixes now you might be wondering why the fuck in god's green earth would you care about instrumentation so much reasons are pretty simple actually i just want to create a very different experience for each song that I make. If it's basically the same experience for every single arrangement that I create, then people wouldn't be as interested to hear. If a song has very poor instrumentation, regardless of compositional value, it will still be piss and shit on either way. Good examples of that would be Sonic 4 and Sonic Forces, the classic tracks. Wow, very predictable, am I right? Fan remixes and arrangements have proved that that the instrumentation was just not enough for the full composition to be appreciated. I'm not dissing any other composer here, I'm just speaking the truth. The same could be said for the sound font remixes. Hey, here's a fun drinking game. Take a shot every time you hear the sonic trumpet. Good luck with that though, because that's like the only trumpet they have in that sound font. If you've listened to at least one of these sound font arrangements, then you've basically heard them all. They basically use the same instruments for almost everything. The same bass, the same trumpets, the same piano slash bell, the same sonic three drums, the same everything. It's not that using the same instruments over and over again is a bad thing. It's just gotten really monotonous. People don't really use these instruments in a way that keeps me invested. For once, I want to hear something new, something fresh, and not just some formulaic dog shit. And I know I'm not alone in this situation, but it definitely feels like I'm doing this all by myself, which, to be honest, does feel kind of stressful. At the same time, I want to see people grow for the better. But people just take these sound font remixes for granted, being like, wow, so cool, so retro i love the sega genesis sound font holy shit guys it's piss shit dick fuck zone act 2 holy crap guys i can imagine this playing in sonic cd's nuts shut the fuck up god damn and every time when these people talk about it it's all about sonic the hedgehog but at the time being i'm not really surprised anymore the sega mega drive is just a home for sonic now it's like the best selling game on the platform so i can't really just yell at someone for making stupid Sonic references when it's not even their fault. But when you're in this certain position like mine, you just find these comments very frequently and it just really bugs you to no end. People like this make these sort of comments on things that aren't even Sonic. So it just kind of drives you to insanity, I guess. But maybe I am just overreacting, right? Right? The term Sega Genesis Remix is kinda used like a buzzword. Once you put it into the video title, you instantly get 1 million views shoved up your fucking asshole. It feels really weird for me to do that, it's like a funny word for clout, so I prefer to use the technical names of the chips instead. I mean sure, it doesn't bring much clicks, but at least I feel comfortable doing it this way. And it also makes the separation process way more easier 
because you can easily tell which one's more of higher quality. Because usually, uh, the Sega Genesis remixes don't usually mention the chip names. And please don't take this the wrong way, I'm not stroking my own ego doing this. Sorry for going down such a tangent, I really need to vent like imposter among us. Because I want to share the things that I go through like each day making this stuff with someone else other than people like me. I don't know what I'll do for October 31st, but we'll see. This is your local Chinese dumbass, Jante. I'm fucking out of here.